everyone, I'm your co-host Sierra and welcome to Making Sense of Success, a podcast dedicated to finding the meaning of success and empowerment. Stay tuned every Saturday for new episodes. Find us on Instagram at makingsenseofsuccess.pod. Feel free to email us at makingsenseofsuccess at gmail.com if you would be interested in sharing your stories of success and empowerment. Enjoy the episode! Alrighty, good morning. Um, did you want to start off with giving us a little bio about yourself, i.e. your name, what you do for a living? Okay, sure. You want me to start now? Yeah. Okay, I'm Shanae Jones. I am an herbalist and the founder of Ivy's Tea Company, a hip-hop inspired herbal tea brand. I've been doing this since 2016 And uh, I just really love being able to mix the two things that I love, which is herbal tea and hip hop music together and actually connect with a lot of people who are interested in tea and living off the land, uh, but also don't necessarily feel like they're crunchy enough or healthy enough to actually participate um, in that herbal space because they have an affinity for hip hop and pop culture. So it's really cool to be able to mesh something that's really traditional and very common with something else that's super trendy and like at the top of everything all, all the time. So um, that's what I do. That's what I do full time now. So I, I love it. I'm, I'm really happy to be able to do this. That is literally so cool. I was just I about to never say that. heard of anything so cool in my life. <laughs> Do you have like a target audience or is it literally just like anybody? Because that's like such an inclusive realm of people. But also so unique. Yeah. Um, Well, I would say that I do have, you know, a target demo, uh, typically uh, millennials, um, people who have an interest in health, but maybe haven't taken a full plunge to go like, oh, I do yoga every Saturday or I hike all the time. You know, people who might do it once or twice a month or if a good girlfriend calls them up and is like, hey, you want to go on a hike? They'll do that. Um, it's it's actually, I mean, you have to have, you definitely have to have a demographic when you start a business because we're not Walmart. You can't be everything to everybody. And even then there are some people that Walmart misses. So you have to... <laughs> You do have to choose your demographic. And if you pick up people along the way, then you'll find that you have these customer segments um, of people who really do connect with your brand or connect with your products, but they weren't the people that you initially went after. And that's totally okay. My ideal customer is someone who's like me. She's a young woman. She's gone to college or at least has an interest in self-education. She likes, as a foodie, she likes to, to eat, drink tea and try new things and Um, So that's the type of person that I had been going for. Along the way, I found, um, you know, like some, uh, I guess they would be like occult people, you know, who do the crystals and the sage. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's not necessarily my vibe, but it certainly relates to tea. So I totally understand why they come into it and why they're interested. Um, I've also attracted, you know, some male customers. And I think that part of that has to do with that hip hop aspect, which is so male dominated. Uh, But my initial customer was someone who's just like me, a young woman who likes tea, but doesn't really feel like the current tea markets or tea brands, excuse me, on the market really speak to them or reflect any of their true interests. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome how you've been able to do that. Would you maybe mind going, I don't know, maybe giving a bit more detail on um, as to how you like mix these two things that are within society kind of like polarized in different areas? Well, I can say for me, I am a firstborn American to British Mm -hmm. and Jamaican parents. So, I mean, I can say it, (laughs) other people can't, I guess. Like Jamaicans can't really dress and we're not like super trendy people, Um, especially in, you know, in an American sort of way of what's Mm -hmm. trendy and what's popular and what's hot. So I was kind of that outcast kid in school. Um, The friend's you know, of course, I don't I don't know if either of you have lived in immigrant communities, but when you do, like, it's just, especially here in Maryland, I can say, like, it's just all of, like, all types of immigrants together. You know, like, I didn't necessarily have many American neighbors. I had neighbors from Mexico and El Salvador. Mm-hmm. I had Guyanese neighbors, Nigerian. A couple of Jamaican families, like mine, were also on our block. So, 
it was different. You know, one of my distinct memories of being a young child is the night that Selena is the day that Selena died. You know, I didn't know who Selena was, um, but my neighbors played her music all night long at the loudest volume I think that you could get. And it was then that I found out who she was and really fell in love with her music. Of course, by the I was right. younger and I was too little, too late. If, if I were older, I probably would have known who she was. But you know, that's the type of culture that I grew up in. Um, and so because there's all these different things, you know, none of those things are distinctly quote unquote American. They're very hyphenated. Mm -hmm. And so when I would go to school, there were a lot of American kids and I was the outcast. So my two best friends were people who um, had Guyanese families and they were hyphenated Americans like myself. And um, so it was through hip hop music that I really learned how to be American. I learned about individualism. I learned about hustling. I learned about um, being, you know, wanting what was hot and what was flashy. And in some ways, those are negative attributes of Americanism. But it's really and truly a part of the culture, you know, being at the forefront, being the big dog, um, being the best of the best, you know, all of those things really do infiltrate in hip hop music. So I totally understand why it is the voice of a lot of people. And uh, once I decided that I wanted to start my own business and that I wanted to sell tea, I thought I was just going to make a website and put really good tea online and people were going to buy it. But that's not enough. You know, you have to have some marketing. You have to have something that's going to pull people in. And for me, the safe thing that I knew about that I was comfortable with was hip hop music. And I kind of watched a lot of other industries to see how they do it. Like Kia actually was selling their cars with the little hip hop gerbils or hamsters, whatever the heck <laughs> right. those were. I remember you that. Know? Yeah. You know, so it's like everywhere. And I don't even think we really realize it. You know, Sprite uses hip hop music all the time to sell their products. And so I just started to look at it from that standpoint and was like, well, if Sprite can do it and Kia can do it, then why can't I do it with T? And I just decided to kind of take from them and apply it to hip hop, to apply it to T in a way that was natural, but also authentic because it's something that I grew up on. So it's a, I'm even a lot closer to hip hop music and hip hop culture than any exec at the Sprite is at this point. So I knew that it could work because at the very least, mine would be authentic where theirs was at least a little bit watered down. We don't have time to be watered down. That tea has to be fresh, you know? <laughs> nice and powerful to make you feel good. Yeah. <laughs> um, what? Um, we like to ask our guests, like, two big questions. Um, so this first one is going to be, what does success mean to you in this moment in time? For me, success would be um, being free. Um, and I guess that's, you know, varies on everybody's terms, but ideally it would be debt free, um, you know, free from real time constraints, being able to get up and go on my own schedule, um, being able to, especially in this society, especially as, um, a, mar a member of a marginalized community, it would be being able to buy my freedom or get out of the sticky situations that seem to hold, um, marginalized people back even more than our counterparts. Um, so for me, like right now, it would be being able to live on my own schedule and not have any debt. Like that would be true success right now, getting to spend all the time that I want with my dog and my mom and my sister. Um, I didn't necessarily need a lot of money to do those things, mm -hmm. but just being able to live like I do right now, which is pretty regular if you ask me. <laughs> and, um, you know, not have to worry about a lot of the expenses that uh, traumatize a lot of people and actually put us into a lot of bad situations where we're forced to live a life we don't always, we don't really want to mm -hmm. because we've got other obligations. So that would be true success. Definitely. Yeah, I completely agree with you. For me, it's, yeah, it's finding comfort in life and being mm -hmm. okay. 100%. Um, yeah. The other question we like to ask our guests is, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received or given someone? Uh, the best advice I've ever received is a piece that I actually hold with me all the time. I got it from my grandmother. Um, I don't know if she's the creator or if she got it from somebody else. <laughs> um, but she used to tell me that if you could see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. 
And right now we have a lot of talk like about manifestation and visualization. Mm-hmm. And that's essentially what she was telling me. You know, if you, if I can picture myself with something or doing something or being something, then it's very much so possible for me. You know, I can actually turn it into something that's tangible. And that's something that I hold with me all the time in my day-to-day life. You know, if I can see myself as a super successful entrepreneur, then I can actually be it. And that's what's so important is that we have the ability ability to believe things before we actually do them. A lot of us are just doing things, but we don't 100% believe we can actually have it. And and that's where the failure comes. You really have to believe before you even start that you can actually have it, you can do it, you can be it. And as long as you believe it, then it's 100% possible. My mama told me like almost the same exact thing growing up as well. And so like, I feel like that's super cool that like, it's a good piece of advice that's very widespread from those who are older than us Mm -hmm. it really gets us into like a good space of like really believing in ourselves and believing in our future that we can make for ourselves yeah I mean there's a lot of things especially as you get older there's more and more that happens more and more that you start to see that makes you feel like the dreams or the aspirations that you have are futile or will never really materialize into anything. But the minute you start letting go is when you really, that's when you really start to have like that self-fulfilling prophecy of failure. So I think it's something that we all should really hold on to a lot more often. It's really hard, especially in times (laughs) like these, it's hard to be imaginative, but, um, People who are imaginative are what's keeping us all going and laughing and smiling and having fun right now, even in the middle of a pandemic and with the country on fire. Mm -hmm. You know, there is that imagination is what brings us all joy. So we should hold on to that. I hope a lot of people know that. That's really powerful. I'm sorry. I'm really just like reflecting on this because it's like making me tear up on this great Sunday. Sorry about that, guys. Um, (laughs) That's like a lot of like powerful things to think about during like a time period that we're going through at this moment. And we thank you for like bringing up like, yeah, we're in a mother freaking pandemic. (laughs) Shit's hard, you know? Um, So it's like good to say, try our hardest to stay positive and like really focus on like what matters. Um, One question that I have like for you is do you, what are your, like, what are your, goals? What are you manifesting for yourself or for your brand right now? Um, You know, it's funny that you bring that up. I just, um, someone else had recently asked me that question and um, I had to take more time to sit down and reflect on those goals that I've had. I think that that's something that we should do all the time. Um, At least once a month, you know, set down a day for reflection And in that moment, I realized that there are some things that I really do want for myself and for my business and for my community. Um, One of my biggest goals is to open a warehouse and keep as much in-house as I possibly can. I think that coronavirus really showed me and a lot of entrepreneurs just how much we rely on other businesses, other people to actually produce and and make our products. And that's not something that I really want to do. I want to have everything as in-house as possible from printing um, all the way down to the herbs and the products that we use to make our teas to canisters and labels. You know, all of that stuff can be in-house and it can be challenging um, to actually do. You know, fulfillment is a hard part of any business. But with that, I can hire more people especially the people that others won't hire, for example, and actually make a big change and be our truly uh, black owned and woman owned business. Um, Not just, you know, something that's like a vanity measurement that I'm just like the cover and I'm just the front of things, but someone who's actually like making the decisions and running the whole business. And I am a woman and um, things are happening for other women and, and other minorities. Uh, it's It's got to be more substantial. This show me that it's got to be a lot more real. It can't just be some surface level stuff like what I feel like a lot of us have had in the past. Um, I do want to have a storefront, you know, something that's like Starbucks, but with a lot more drip. Um, one of my biggest goals is to make it to the UFC octagon. Um, I love UFC. I love the fighting. It's so barbaric, I know, but it's also really cool. 
Um, and I would love to, to sponsor an athlete and actually have my logo in the octagon. Like that would be a real big, that would be a big deal for me. I would buy like front row tickets to the show just to see my logo. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I want to make a commercial with two chains. Um, I know that he drinks tea and he's just like kind of a, like the epitome of like that hip hop and that tea, like that holistic vibe. Like I really Mm -hmm. would love to work with him. Um, and I'd like to, of course, get stupid rich. Um, but, <laughs> and um, I would like to create a co-op herbalism school. So I feel like as an herbalist, I know how difficult it is to actually start an herbal apprenticeship. It's very expensive. And then it takes a lot of time. So if you don't have a lot of money and a lot of time, uh, it, it it's going to be a challenge to actually take a formal herbal apprenticeship. So I'd like to do something that lowers that barrier so that there are more, that there are younger people actually at these apprenticeships. I remember when I took mine and I was the youngest person there and it's really kind of sad because I was 30 at the time. (laughs) So um, not that 30 is old, but like, no, I, would no. hope that, <laughs> I would hope that like a 23 or a 24 year old, you know, you haven't really, you're not really in the thick of your career just yet. So maybe you would have some time to take an herbal apprenticeship, except it's so expensive. So I would like to be able to lower that barrier so that younger people could participate. But yeah, all those of, are my top five goals for now. All of those things are so awesome. And They're so incredible. Wow. unique. Yeah. Like we've never, like, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say they, no. like, at least that I know, they say, I want to do a commercial with two chains. And I said, <laughs> I will pay for that myself. <laughs> I will rewatch it on YouTube. <laughs> Solely me. <laughs> I, I, I definitely, you, it would be you and me because I, I will yeah. watch it. All, <laughs> it I would keep you. it on a loop in the background. They'd be like, man, how did this video get a million views so You're fast? Viral. <laughs> I'll be playing it on my device, my iMac, my MacBook, my iPad, all my phone. <laughs> And where are the co-op schools as well? Like that's, that's such um, a unique type of thing to go forth with. Cause I, yeah, I've never actually, now that you brought it up, I've never actually heard of a co-op school um, that's there for herbalists to learn. Yeah. I, I mean, they have, um, there's one in Costa Rica, okay. um, but you know, you got to get to Costa Rica. Yeah. Which means you got to be able to have time off for work for however long you're going to be in Costa Rica. Cause you can't just fly back to work, you know, on the weekend. Yeah. Every other day yeah, or so something. yeah. I, I feel like I, maybe I'm being optimistic, but I believe that it could work, you know, something where we pour into the students and maybe the students can become the teachers and we can, offer like housing or something. I just, I feel like it can work. I haven't thought it all the way through just yet. Right now, I just have the big idea. Um, But I I can definitely work out the nooks and crannies. I can make it happen. I'm confident. (laughs) Well, if you can see it, you can hold it. Am I right? Exactly. 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 (laughs) Where are you based out of? I'm in, I'm in Laurel, Maryland, which is right in between DC and Baltimore. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> All the y'all East Coast people, <laughs> lucky, always two hours ahead of me at any given point of the day. Oh, what a what a life you guys live! I will tell you that. Well, I'm sure the weather is better in Colorado. It's not hot and sticky like it is over here. No, it's hot and dry. You All step right. on pavement and you feel like you have stepped in a pit of hell. Um, you're like oh my god am I gonna be a roast chicken if I go outside for one second that's how it feels that's funny so you had said that um that tea kind of had been integrated into your life like since you were young growing Mm -hmm. up um would you maybe mind telling us more about that and how like it came to be such an important part of your life yeah sure well I mean Like I said, my family is Jamaican and British. So there's a, I mean, there was just a lot of tea that my grandmother, every day she had a cup of tea. She had multiple cups of tea. Um, She (laughs) she used to drink um, Tetley, which is like the British version of Lipton. Uh Um, And so it was just like bagged black tea, really not good quality in hindsight. You know, it's not even, it's not even something you would get at like Starbucks or even Dunkin' Donuts now, but it was the best that they had at the time you know, there weren't many competitors. Um, 
and she would make the tea and she would use a lot of condensed milk and sugar. So by the time she was done, it was like mostly milk with a splash of tea and a lot of sugar. <laughs> Um, and she used to drink that all the time. And like one of my biggest accomplishments was knowing how to make the, make her tea the way that she liked it, which meant you had to pour the condensed milk just so that it had like a nice kind of a beige-ish, olive kind of a tone to it. Um, and then you knew like, this is the one that grandma won. Um, and, and that's how I just grew up. You know, my mom drank a lot of tea, not as much as my, my grandmother did and not as much as I do either, despite the fact that she's the British one. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, that's how I learned a lot with my grandma. She taught me about like politics and life back home in Jamaica and what it was like for her being a nurse and her work struggles and stuff like that. Uh, she taught me just so much about, womanhood and about society and we did it all the time over tea we would just make tea and we would just talk I mean I don't know what else she could have been doing I was little I didn't have anything else to do but she (laughs) she probably could have been doing a million other things but she would sit down and talk to me over tea and I really appreciate those moments and that's what I hope that people get to do with their children or their parents or whomever, when they have a cup of, of tea with from Ivy's Tea Company. You know, I hope that they get to make those same memories and those same moments that I had growing up. And I think, yeah, I think that's probably, like, it can be really common in families, too. Because I think about it for me as well. Like, when I was growing up as, like, a teenager, and even till now, like, I've always kind of been a tea drinker. Mm-hmm. Like, I love coffee and everything in the morning. But then by nighttime, like, I just want tea. Um. But I felt like all our conversations, normally there's like, you're having a cup of tea or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just so fitting. It's like perfect for the It's movie. comforting, it, yeah. Yeah, it's a little posh, you know, so <laughs> you feel good. So if someone were to come to you and be completely new to, I guess, being a tea drinker, never really been into it, and they ask you, where do I start? What would you tell them? Um, well, if, you know, shopping with me, I would tell them to start with um, something like our Sister Sister or our cream, which is a mint tea. Sister Sister is a chamomile rose tea and cream is a mint one. Um, and I, because, mostly because you can't really mess it up. Um, yeah. <laughs> in the sense that as long as you have an infuser and you put the tea in the infuser and you put it in your cup, you add your water, you know, you can let it brew for pretty much just about as long as you'd want and it'll still taste pretty good. Um, definitely with the cream, not so much with the chamomile, but um, most people probably can't taste the difference. Uh, but yeah, those are the ones that I would tell them to start with just because you're going to, and, and most of my customers are first time tea drinkers, mm-hmm. right? So that's like oh, wow. something that I have to overcome as well. Like I, I'm consistently right. teaching. Um, a lot of people are into bag tea, but you know, a lot of the bags are made from plastic or um, some GMO byproduct. And I think what's interesting is even me, I didn't realize just how bad the bags might be. But mm. now in hindsight, it's like, it can't be paper. If it were paper, you poured boiling hot water on it, it would disintegrate. Like, hello, of course there's something else inside right, of this yeah. product. And it never dawned on me. It just felt like paper, looked like paper. You know, it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck. It's a duck. Um, <laughs> but I just, I felt like once I realized it, I was like, this is so stupid. Um, I'm not doing the right thing. And I switched to loose leaf tea. So I think that I would tell people to try those blends um, with an infuser, try to stick to the time guidelines if possible. But if you don't, then it won't taste too bad. And then once you're getting that better flavor from the tea, hopefully you see just, you know, it's a lot more bang for your buck. Honestly, you can reuse loose leaf teas, Um, In the sense that you can just take it, you know, right out of the strainer, save it and use it again later. Um, You know, it's not so much waste. It's just, it seems like it costs more and it's more work up front, but it's really not. You get a better cup of tea and you save money. So it's a win-win. This might be a dumb question, but is it like decompostable? Um... The the tea leaves, the tea leaves themselves? Well, they're herbs. Um... 
So I would say yes. I mean, there are some herbs that probably go better, like if you have plants or something like that, like our sister sister is stinging nettles tea. Um, so once you're done with that, for example, you can actually just put that into a pot. You know, your plants actually like stinging nettles. Um, but for the other ones, I mean, yeah, they should. They should okay, combine. good, because I've mean, been yeah. composting all my tea. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> um, it's nice to know that, like, you do care about, like, the environment. Yes, like, herbalism is very apparent within the environment because it's herbs mm-hmm. and flowers and stuff. So it's nice that you do care about that aspect of not putting it in a tea bag, even though that's, like, the most ac- like accessible to, like, people's like mindset Mm -hmm. some people find that you know what I mean it's like a really like tricky slope yeah it's hard because you know everyone wants what's convenient but I also think that part of having tea is that you're not trying to go fast like if you're looking for something that's like quick and speedy you know that's just not tea culture that's certainly like coffee culture by all means Mm -hmm. and even then you know there are certain aspects of coffee and once you get to like really fancy coffee drinkers they're taking their time they're french pressing and doing all that stuff and like really being deliberate about how they make their coffee but in general when it comes to getting something done and I'm going to drink this so that I can be fast and productive and quick. You know, that's not tea. Tea is for the moment of pause. And so I think that forcing people to use loose leaf tea actually helps with that as well. We have to learn to slow down. Um, That should be part of the reason why you want to drink tea anyways, that you really want to be intentional about this moment for yourself or for yourself and a friend. Um, And and I, I like that loose leaf tea challenges you to slow down and be more present in that moment when you're brewing tea. And I think it does like really come full circle in that way, because even prior to this, right, we were talking about um, the health effects of having it within this paper like bag um, and also Oh, I'm blanking on it. Yeah, the paper like bag, but also even just like the environmental aspect that you can mm-hmm. most likely compost your tea. Right. Um, that's the point. I mean, I, I think that that's, I hope that that sort of feel good movement and just, you know, that life change of, oh, I'm drinking loose leaf tea and now I'm able to compost it. Like, I hope that that encourages you in some other way to do something else for the earth, right? Like, right. um, you know, maybe purchase your own reusable straws and take them with you when you go places or make sure you're using reusable bags or um, condensing your trips like so that you're not here, there and everywhere like three and four times a day. Like maybe just going someplace one time like, oh, I have to hit this store, this store and this store and then coming home for the day. Um, maybe it'll make you choose um, a bowl of fresh fruit over some cake or something, you know, just those little choices like over time. Um, you find that you're just making a whole life choice and, and it's a big change for your life, but it happened gradually and it came with one decision over the course of, of several months or several years in your life. So that's that's also another benefit of, of drinking tea, I hope. Absolutely. <laughs> and with starting a business and everything, what would be some tips you would have for someone looking to start like a similar business within like mm. the tea industry? Well, uh, I mean, for me, you know, a lot of people ask me, and I think this is probably maybe one of the biggest questions that people will ask is, you know, where do you buy your teas? Because I guess a lot of businesses, you know, whether it be like a hair business or if you do clothing, a lot of people are buying clothes in bulk from vendors in China. And, you know, then you get your models and you take your pictures and you get people to buy from you. You know, that's that's how it goes. Um, but a lot of people ask me where I buy my teas and it's like nowhere. Um, I get my herbs from lots of different places, but we make our teas, you know, these are our recipes. We're not out, you know, buying in bulk and then just giving it a funky hip hop name and putting it on the market. (laughs) So there's a little bit more work to that. So for me, it was actually learning how to make tea. If you're not going to make your own tea and there's totally nothing wrong with that, who the heck knows who makes Lipton? I mean, it could be any old body. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, buying it in bulk and then putting some labels on it. Um, you know, make sure that you, you're sourcing from a place that you respect that's reputable because you don't want people to get something bad and then, you know, it turns on you and you're the one stuck holding, you know, just holding the bad reputation. So I would say make sure that you're sourcing responsibly. Um, 
of course, be original. You know, there's lots of people who have stolen my ideas or tried to steal my product names and stuff like that. Um, you know, and it doesn't work. I mean, you have to be original. Um, you have to look at all different sorts of influences, you know, go different places, do different things, read different books, watch different TV shows, you know, make sure you're constantly being inspired. Um, I'm, I, my most recent ad, for example, I made an ad for a new set of China that we released. Um, and in order to make that ad, you know, I watched, uh, I'm going to say at least 10 or 15 hours worth of jewelry commercials. Oh, wow. Um, because that was my influence. And I wanted to, I wanted, instead of it being jewelry, I wanted it to be my tea and I wanted it to be something that you saw as valuable and something that you saw as special. And I liked the lighting mm-hmm. in those jewelry commercials. And I liked the deep voice in those commercials um, <laughs> and the way the men describe the products or the women describe the products. And so you have to go to different areas and different sorts of things to be influenced. Um, right now I'm, I've been watching WrestleMania <laughs> um, and it's actually given me lots of great ideas for a few future project that I want to do with IBC Tea Company. So also, you know, like my second point would be to be original. And if you're having difficulties coming up with original ideas, then expose yourself to different things. Um, things that you wouldn't really consider to be maybe even related to your tea or your product or whatever. Get outside of the box. Um, what else? Oh, um, and the third thing, which might probably should have been the first thing, is <laughs> um, don't be afraid um, to take, there's lots of um, startup accelerators. Now, some of them cost, but there are a good amount of them that are free. Um, try to find a free one if you can, because they're always good. Um Take a startup accelerator that'll teach you how to start your business. You know, when I started Ivy's Tea Company, I didn't know a damn thing. Um, I didn't know if I was going to do tea or perfume, as a matter of fact. Um, mm-hmm. I was going to do a perfume business with my sister. And then she was like, Nene, you're just really, really intense. And I think you should do this on your own. So she dropped me. And I was like, girl, I don't know. We were going to do perfume. I don't know anything about perfume. Like, I was going to pay the background and, and you would tell us what to do with the perfume. And she She's like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. You're putting too much pressure on me. And so I was like, all right, whatever. And so that's why I started to do tea, which is something that I knew and probably should have started off with from the beginning. Um, But the accelerator taught me how to go from just an idea, which was, oh, I think I want to start a tea company all the way down to, wow, I have a website and I have an actual mock-up of my product. And that was only six days. Um, So, yeah, so some of them are really fast. Some of them are longer. You know, the second one that I took was two weeks um, and it was very intense, but it taught me how to do financial modeling and how to predict my financial future. Um, It taught me about marketing, making ads on Facebook and Google, Um, you know, those sorts of things. You know, you don't have to know anything, but if you're going to be serious about the business, then you need to invest some time into it and you will recoup. You know what I mean? The universe pays you back. You know, even if you do your business and you learn all of these things and you find out, man, I I can't do this. I don't have the time to do this. Or I really don't have the interest in doing it. You didn't lose anything. You know what I mean? Like we have to remember that you, you're still going to get something back from it. Um, It might not be now. It might be in 10 years, those things that you learned and the hard work that you put in, in that moment will pay off later on. So we have to be in the mindset that we're willing to work because we get paid back when we work. Um, and yeah, those are like the, the three things or four things I would say. I hope that was helpful. I feel like I was rambling. Oh man. (laughs) Space for you to ramble. Uh, I promise you that this, a lot of places are like, you like rambling is seem is like portrayed as something bad or like not helpful, but like, it's really helpful in this setting because the people who choose to listen can be moved by every single choice that you've made to start something that they agree with as well. So that's Ooh. really why like we have our podcast. So somebody can listen and kickstart their life to be successful or to be fulfilling. And I think you've done a very, very great job of speaking to all of the people who you could personally help with all of that. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, and I guess um, 
another thing for people starting a business um, is a little after the fact, but um, save as much as you can because eventually, you know, well, maybe if you want to do your business full time, like you want to be employed by it, you should be saving money along the way so that when you are ready to, to leave your day job or um, whatever, you know, you'll have some money saved up for yourself. Um, for me, I started off saving um, a paycheck a month, which meant a lot because two of my paychecks paid rent. So that means I had to pay all my other bills with only one check because um, right. I got paid on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. Um, so things were really tight there. Um, I also paid off credit card debt. So I would encourage people to do that. Be as debt free as you possibly can, because when you do want to leave your day job like like maybe me, or you get fired from your day job like I did, <laughs> Um, you want to be able to be like, okay, all I'm going to have to pay next month is my rent and my car note, my car insurance. You don't want it to be your rent, your car note, your car insurance, your cell phones, the phone that you're leasing, this credit card, that credit card, student loans. You know, you want to bring your expenses as low as you possibly can. Um, So definitely do that. Pay off debt and save as much as you can while you can. That's useful for anybody trying to do anything. I promise you that. I was just going to say that. Yeah, that's a very important piece of financial advice for sure. So when we like to wrap up the podcast, we uh, like to end off with two questions. So the first one would be, uh, do you have, other than your tea company per se, um, which please feel free to mention that so people can find that. But uh, is there another maybe a local or small business that you like or um, ethical or sustainable product that Mm. you'd like to give a shout out to? Oh, sure. So should I do the shout out first? Whichever. Yeah, we can do that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, for me, I, you know, I support, uh, I recently went fake viral on Twitter because I I made a just a thread of all of the small and black owned businesses that I support on a regular basis um, because they have everyday products that we use. So I'd like to shout out Pure Home. They make laundry detergent and home cleaning supplies. Um, Pardo Naturals, they make like dishwashing liquid and stuff like that. Um, Dirt Don't Hurt makes charcoal toothpaste and um, like a (laughs) mouthwash that really works. Garner's Garden also makes like deodorant, um, face cleaning products or face skincare products. Um, Bariki Body Care, they also make like soaps and lotions that I use. Um, There's like a whole bunch of just small, I just, I like to encourage people to support small businesses because every need that you have can be filled by a small business. Everything like socks, skincare, hair care, um, actual clothing, whether it be tailored or something that's like ready to wear. Um, just try and find a small business, especially one that's local and in, in your community that you can support because we're really all we have. We've seen with the paycheck loan people crap and the SBA stuff and how Roots Chris and Shake Shack ended up getting all the money. I mean, small businesses, we're really, we really do rely on the people in our communities, those local to us to support us. So if you can, you're already going to buy. So just make the decision to support something or someone that's local to you. Um, and I speak for them when I say it's really, really appreciated. It really is. Um, and then on to me, I guess. <laughs> um, it, you can find all of our teas. We do specialize in herbal teas. Um, so we have like one black tea, one green tea, but we're not really like that. We're not that girl. You know, we're definitely here for the herbal <laughs> treatment. Um, that's what we do. And we try to give chamomile and lavender and skull cap the same respect that weed has. You know, that's my champion. That's me. If you ever see me at the protest with a torch and a sign that's like, lavender is as valuable as weed, that's me. You'd be like, who the hell is that crazy lady? <laughs> it's me, damn it. <laughs> and I'll die on that hill. I want lavender and, and all of my essential oils. I want us to get the respect we deserve. I'm tired of cannabis getting all of this shine. I'm over it. Um, yeah, so you can... 
follow us and get all of that herbal knowledge um, at Ivy's Tea Co. on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also find us online at ivystea.com. You can always send a DM. Um, I share herbal knowledge. Like I said, we play a game called Deeper Than Plants that tests your knowledge about herbs. And I also do like an herb of the day. So I try to teach people about unconventional herbs, things like horny goat weed or ashwagandha root. Um, that you might not use, but um, are accessible to you and can probably help you, especially if you're at Whole Foods or something and you happen to see a container, you're like, what's on, what's this mean? You know, hopefully we can share something that you'll learn and it'll jog your memory and you'll be like, ah, I know what this, this licorice root does. You know, that's my goal is to get people more cognizant of herbs and, and their benefits. So you can always check us out, like I said, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Ivy's Tea Co. and online at Ivy's Tea.com. Thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. We've loved hearing about your story and the unique properties every that it has. It is so cute and mm-hmm. so amazing. And I cannot wait to spend my next paycheck for you. I'm so excited to be like, yes, herbal tea, herbal tea, no green tea, herbal tea. Yes. Yay. I love it. I love the energy. <laughs> And then the last question we would have for you is um, what did you want our guests or not, not our guests, our listeners um, to take away from this episode? Oh, um, mm. oh, geez. Hopefully not that I ramble on. Um, (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) Um, I I want them to understand uh, the power of, oh, this is what it is. I want people to understand the power of positivity and the power of the mind. Um, you know, what you think is what is. And I encourage you to feed your mind, body, and soul with only positive things that uplift and empower you to be your best self. Um, so that's what I want them to take away. That's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> get away right now. I promise you I'm going to take what you said, put it into my day. Because I yeah. needed that. <laughs> every True. day, every day, my friend Nikki, she owns Buy From a Black Woman. It's a nonprofit organization that invests in Black women-owned businesses. And she taught me an affirmation. And every day I say it five times to myself. Um, I say, today will be a great day because greatness is filled inside of me. And even when I don't really feel like it, it's true. After At least after the fifth time, it's true. The first time, it's like, girl, go to bed. But, <laughs> but by the time I get to that time, I'm, I'm reminded, you know, we're here, you know, we're, we're still here. We're still here for a reason. So um, I try to bask in that and really enjoy it and make the most of it. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Did you want to share maybe your personal socials so people can oh. find you? Yeah. If you want to see more like positive daily affirmations, um, and I, I talk about my losses that I take in business all the time. So I definitely keep it real. And I also have a dog. Her name is Foxy Cleopatra and I Aww. post her a lot. You can find me on Instagram at Shanae did good. <laughs>